So I wasn't going to make a second video today, but Godot 4.6 Dev 1 just dropped, which is absolutely absurd because we literally just got 4.5. So we obviously got to check this out. The other video I recorded is going to be out tomorrow. So stay tuned for that one. But reading through this, so the first development snapshot of 4.6 has arrived, as is often the case for our first development snapshot. A significant portion of quality PRs from our backlog are finally able to see the light of day as they were either locked out from 4.5 or they were too risky to merge for the stable release. In saying this though, this is by far the biggest our backlog has ever been, so getting it all in for an initial snapshot was unrealistic. As such, well, this may mean a slower trickle of PRs. Initially, you can expect future development snapshots to further expand on the, on the foundation that this release sets. So a couple other things here, but it sounds like we got some pretty cool quality of life features in this initial dev release. Obviously, this is a dev build, so probably don't use this for your main project, but if you want to check it out, here are the features that we have. So First one is drag and drop export variables. So I didn't actually check this one out before, but part of starting out slow with enhancements in the development cycle means that you can expect quite a lot of QOL quality of life additions in the near future. One such addition that we're excited to showcase comes from F keys, the ability to drag and drop objects to the script editor to automatically create an exported variable. So I'm not sure if, cause the usual behavior is an on ready variable, right? I'm assuming there's like a hot key that you have to hold down. I'm not seeing it here, but that's probably the case. I can't imagine it would override the on ready functionality because so many people use on readies, but I see this being super helpful because I personally really only use export references. I don't think it'll work with VS code, but I guess we'll, we'll see about that. Hopefully in the future, we get like a embedded VS code window. That would be sick. And I know there's other builds of Godot that kind of have that functionality, but I want it as just like a plugin. That would be so cool. Um, next up, we have OpenXR add support for spatial entities extensions. So this one, I'm not too sure about. Um, it says the OpenXR spatial entities extensions was introduced to standardize obtaining and interacting with information about the user's real world environment. This is an absolute Goliath of a specification and it was reflected in the implementation seeing over 7,500 lines of code changed. So if you are interested in this, I would definitely check it out for yourself. I'm not too sure what features this would give us because I personally don't really use XR stuff, but it does sound like probably a pretty big feature if it has 7,500 lines of code. I'll have to check that out uh, after the video. Hide control focus when given via mouse input. So. It says the focus state logic for mouse and touch is now decoupled from keyboard and joypad. While it's common for programs to have significant overlap between registering inputs of these types, it's not uncommon for systems to deliberately stylize the two types separately, often handling their inputs in entirely separate ways. And also apologies, the sprinklers just turned on outside my apartment. So if there's background noise, I am sorry for that. I'll try to remove it in post. So it says this change enables the granular control for tool makers and UI designers. Included in the PR is a comprehensive rule set for when focus is shown, which you've, we've included below. So it looks like just some focus changes and then you can enable the uh, previous behavior with a setting now. This one is really nice. So it looks like we just don't need to restart the editor when the custom theme changes, which saves a lot of time, honestly. But this is a very very nice fix. And then we have the list of just random things. So avoid unnecessary updates in tile map layer. Let's check this one out. This just looks like some tile map layer optimizations, which that's always good. Do not require editor restart when changing manipulating gizmo opacity settings. That's cool. Allow to use sliders for integers. That's really nice. I wonder if that affects export variables because I'm actually not sure if you can do H sliders for export ranges with an integer, but I haven't tested it, but it looks like that's just available now. So that's pretty cool. Fix vertical alignment of inspector category titles. This is just a super minor fix. Speed up large selections in the editor. That's going to be nice for optimizations. Used a fixed width font for the expression evaluator. That's interesting. I actually forgot the expression evaluator existed, so I will probably be using this. And this kind of acts as a reminder for that, I guess. Looks like some Wayland stuff, which I covered in a previous video. And then method to draw ellipses. That's interesting. So we get a new draw function. That's pretty cool. I always like that kind of stuff for like game jams where you can't use art assets and you have to just use built-in drawing. 
that might be uh, used in the future. And that's really it. So if you want to check this out, I'll leave the link in the description, but just figured I'd cover this because it literally just dropped today. So the big thing looks like just this dragging export references. Let me know if you guys prefer using export references or on ready variables. I find a lot of people like on readies over export and I honestly prefer export like way more. So let me know in the comments, um, but huge shout out to all the channel members and also the Patreons. Thank you so much for your support. As always, you guys are awesome and I really appreciate the support. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. And if you want to like get connected with the community, I have most of the links in the description or you can just go over to my website, cubalgames.com and most of the resources are there as well. But thanks for watching the video and I will see you guys in the next one.